Welcome to How to Recruit in the SEA. I'm Kippa Gercaldi. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about my background to let you know kind of how this class developed and where things came from. Um, and mainly for the last 12 years, I've been an HR director and worked with a lot with recruitment. And uh, when I was living in Kingdom and Meridiers, I was actually the Kingdom Chatelaine. And developing technical uh, techniques for trying to recruit at that time is how this class finally came into place. I was asked by uh, the Midrealm General to actually take a look into where our command staff um, was coming from, where our sergeants and our captains. And interestingly enough, when I looked up in the order of precedence, the uh, ratio um, over a three-year period was one to four. So in the earlier year, when people were given an award, um, it was four times as many times as three years later. And that kind of led us to a scenario of looking at AOAs, and AOAs, at least within our kingdom, was also a 1 to 4 ratio, which told us that we were actually down from recruitment for 75%. So at this time, um, trying to come up with some special uh, techniques that will actually help your group in recruiting um, has become foremost in the kingdom's mind, and that's what we're going to work on today. My uh, email address is listed out there. It's Sir Kippen, S-Y-R-K-Y-P-P-Y-N, at Paragon Keep. P-A-R-A-G-O-N-K-E-E-P dot com. And any questions that you may have after watching this video, please send that to me. I'd be more than happy to help you. The first thing that we're going to look at, which is what I feel is most important, is identifying your target population. Recruiting people and the whole process that involved in bringing people into your group is a pretty lengthy process. It's pretty involved if you're really committed to bringing in new members. And if you don't have the target population down right off the bat, you're really just going to, going to be spinning your wheels. This does a couple things. Not only um, does it put a lot of effort into something with very minimal success, but it also really frustrates your group. And that leads itself you know, as indicative of other problems. And so it's very important that identifying your target population is the first thing that you work on. Now, target population is more specific than just your zip code area, the area within your group. Target population may be identified by ethnicity, culture, age, socioeconomic status, education, or even common interests. So don't think of yourselves as just trying to look for something in your immediate area or your immediate county or your immediate neighborhood. Break it down to something more specific. Um, and we're going to actually talk about the different types of uh, cultures and areas that you can look at. Who are you looking for? Here's a list of other groups I've worked with and, and who they've been looking for in the past. Students, families, young people, professionals, people interested in archaeology, librarians, historians, uh, history geeks, uh, you know, people that have been very interested in history all along, sci-fi geeks, which is uh, traditionally where we found a lot of our, uh, our SCA members, DINKS, which stands for Double Income No Kids, retirees, and uh, people with higher education specifically looking for somebody that has money because this hobby costs a lot of money, a lot of time and one of my groups actually had suggested to me about the baby boomers I think this is a population that's overlooked many times these people are, have a lot of time on their hands um, most of them have retired with pretty good incomes and they have that disposable cash as well as uh, a lot of free time to be able to work with their organization so while many groups are actually looking for young people since most of us got in um, that college age, you know, don't neglect to bring in other people that might be valuable to your, to your uh, organization. Now, the next thing we need to do is where, look for where do we look for these people. I have a couple examples here of um, two major areas, college students and rural urban areas, for where we look for target population. So if you're in a town that has a lot of college students, you really want to identify different uh, shops and places in your college town where these college students hang out. So you could look at coffee houses, comic book stores, used bookstores, libraries, laundromats. They all got to do laundry at some time. Just having flyers up you know, can work out really well for you there. Any type of maybe dance clubs, uh, museums they may attend, and a whole other area for students um, that just recently has kind of developed is the new homeschool groups. Uh, my wife actually used to be the Minister of Youth for our kingdom, and she used to get a number of calls from parents that had homeschooled kids that they were looking for something in their curriculum to work with the Middle Ages. So definitely this is a group that's untapped, 
and I think it's a lot of interest for a lot of groups that they don't think about. If you're more of a rural or urban area, uh, maybe you should be considering the churches, civic centers, community activities, sporting groups. Our heavy combat, our rapier is a sport, right? I mean, that's, that's what we work with. So, you know, people that are actually interested in other sporting groups, you know, may be interested in our activity as well. Boy and Girl Scouts, of course, is always you know, a great place to find families and children. Businesses. If you have a business in your area that actually targets any type of uh, product that might help out the SCA, like Tandy Leather, um, currently I actually I have an armor business myself, and at Tandy they actually have my business cards and some of my armor on display. When people come in to take a look at that, they ask about the SCA, and it's been a great uh, point for people to be able to get in contact with us. Ren fairs have been big. Um, other places you can look for, uh, one of our uh, chief uh, banes of existence right now is World of Warcraft. And a lot of you may laugh about that, but uh, a number of months ago, I actually had talked on the, the ShivNet um, with some of the other knights, and there were knights that actually said that they had been losing squires to fighter practice because of World of Warcraft. So this is a huge area of people um, that are sitting at home, not really interacting with anyone else other than on the computer, that we can be tapping into. Other living history groups, um, you know, give you a little bit of background, in the last 15, 20 years, uh, if you were getting into the society and you came into the SCA and you wanted to be part of a medieval reenactment group and you decided, no, I, uh, I'm not really interested in, in this particular thing, you know, there wasn't a lot of other groups out there to do. But today, you've got live steel groups, you've got um, LARP groups, uh, which is live role-playing games. There's a lot of other areas that you can go and find in medieval reenactment, as well as within the other history groups, you have the Civil War, uh, World War II, World War I, there's Korean War groups, French and Indian War groups. There's a lot of people out there that are very interested in history, and those areas may not you know, s support, in your area, their particular group, so they may be interested in coming to us. So typically when we're trying to get out and look at finding these people, one of the biggest things that we try to do to, to get out with those are demonstrations. 